today, I go completely hands-free. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Today, I am going to be playing about with the Mayo armband. And if you don't know what a Mayo is, Mayo is a, a gesture controlling armband that allows you to use different gestures to normally control different things. So down here it says compatible with PowerPoint. Uh, it's really integrated well with things like QuickTime and iTunes. But the whole concept is that you put this on and you don't need to be sitting down, touch a mouse or a keyboard. It's built in sort of software is great. You can see that these are the apps that are supported natively. And you also get things like a Mayo keyboard, which if we open up, you can see that you can type on without needing to actually touch your keyboard, which is great. We're gonna integrate this into Macs. So by standard, uh, you can create LUA files, so very similar to JavaScript, that allow you to use the Mayo over an app, so it'll detect when an app's running and then allow you to sort of interface with it. But we want to get physical data into Macs and to do that, we're gonna use our favorite trick using OSC. Now, uh, Sammy K has created this great My Mayo OSC bridge and that takes the Bluetooth data coming from the sensor and turns it into uh, some readings that we can take in Macs. So I can see here that I have the Mayo armband plugged in, it's all set up. I've downloaded and installed this, it's both Windows and Mac, which is fantastic for all of you watching. And then it's coming in on OSC port 777. So if we go into Macs, I'm gonna use my UDP receive, and then I'm gonna tell it 777. And if I plug in a message here, you'll see that we're getting loads of information coming through, which is fantastic. But it's all a bit clunky. You will see that it also brings in pose, so it can tell when my hand is doing one of the poses registered by Mayo. We've got accelerometer data in an XYZ. We've got the gyro data in XYZ again. And then we have orientation data. It uses the XYZ W quaternion. And then we have roll, pitch, and yaw. Now, these values here are the most important because we can actually use the use these for pretty much any calculation we need. I am going to make use of roll, pitch, and yaw to allow us to recreate a pointer inside Max as if we were using the uh, Mayo as a mouse. So we need to sort out and look at these values. So to begin with, I'm going to close that. And I'm going to plug it into an OSC root object so that we can root all of our OSC messages. Uh, and I know that Mayo Gyro, Mayo Excel, Mayo Pose, and then finally Mayo Orientation are the four that uh, are supported. So now if I plug in a message to each of these properly, You'll see that we're getting different data for each. Pose will only work when the Mayo is unlocked and then by default it always stays locked. So if I double tap my fingers, it unlocks it and then it will register me doing different, uh, different actions. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to get rid of all this uh, this MAC address at the start because we just don't need it anymore because it's useless data and the, the my OSC hasn't been updated for a while. Let me just full screen that for you. That's okay, so the first thing we're going to do is at ZL dot, dot slice one. And exactly as you think, that is going to cut off the first piece of information and output that one piece and then the remainder. So now in there, we have just the pure gyro data split down X, Y, and Z. 
So we can run that through an uh, unpack, FFF, three floats, FFF. So now we have our X, Y, and Z data all coming out of the right hand outlet. Now, I don't know about you, but I always find it really hard to visualize numbers like these when they change so rapidly. So what I've been doing recently is I'm going to first put this into a round to one decimal place. Oh, I'm going to have to recreate that because I've just changed the round value. And first into the first inlet. I'm going to take uh, this round value into a multi-slider. And the cool thing about multi-slider is if you plug it in, it will update to the value that we've got. Uh, it's not very easy to see. So if we go in and change some settings, first thing I'm going to do is change it to horizontal. I'm going to come down to the bottom and tell it that I want, I still want one slider, but I want it to do a line scroll. So then it will start recording the value and going along, much like we're looking at a, so like a heartbeat center or something cool like that. So now when I do, what's this? This is gyro X. So I'm going to do gyro X, Y, Z. Now we have a visualization. So when I move my arm left or up and down, you can see that it's given us some values. And obviously uh, it's quite drastic because it's using the, uh, there's, there's no sort of specific orientation for the gyro. It's just going from where the, the Mayo logo is on the armband. And simply all we need to do is one, two, three. And that'll copy all the settings. So now I have a visualization for the gyro X, Y, Z. So when I move my arm in a weird fat pattern, you can see things happening. Where do we go from there? Well, we are going to duplicate this and plug that into the accelerometer as well. Because the accelerometer again just has three values, so we don't need to do anything. And you can see here that uh, although it isn't perfectly baselined here, we could, we could run this to a scale to make sure that zero is always zero, so when my arm is stationary it's not doing anything. Uh, but you can see the X is a great example here of uh, when I move my arm up and down, it gives us that spike from uh, the, the acceleration value. So if you wanted to get how fast someone was moving their arm to calculate their projectile or something, I don't know what you would use it for, uh, we have these values. I'm going to bring just a message box and our slice. I'm going to plug this into Pose. So now uh, I installed the Unlock app, which is available from the application uh, store. And that just means that uh, the Mayo, even when it thinks it's locked, will still report the values. So I can do my uh, fist, I can do my wave in, wave out, and spreading my fingers, just so we can constantly register that. So you can limit things to happen only when actions go. Uh, at the end of this, we'll have it so that we can use the gesture our arm to record movements as if it were a mouse. You could do it so that if someone clenches their fist, then that is a click or something like that, I don't know. And then we're going to bring this out again and plug that into orientation. But orientation actually has seven values. So it has the X, Y, Z, W, yaw, pitch, roll. I'm going to bring that here. So I'm going to do X, Y, Z, W. Uh, these values are really useful. These are sort of uh, equalized values for both of these together. So it takes the acceleration and the gyro to work out where the arm is from an almost baseline. Uh, it's called, I think it's quaternion. Quaternion? I don't know how to pronounce it, but it works on baseline rotations and uh, it's sort of it's used a lot in vector and 3D graphic packages. So if you're familiar with that sort of work, you'll this will make sense to you. Uh, so I'm just going to put quat w. And the most important values I'm going to take from this are 
going to be the yaw pitch and roll because they are going to be the most useful values for me to get uh, angles as if we are pointing the mouse at a screen or pointing my arm at the screen as a mouse. So we have roll pitch and yaw. Roll pitch yaw in that order there. So when I rotate my arm, you can see that roll changes. So that's me just rotating my wrist left to right and the arm picking it up. Pitch, when I point my arm up, when I point my arm down, up, down, up, down. Finally, we have yaw, which is left and right. So we are going to take pitch and yaw specifically to work out whether the arm is pointing up, down, left or right within a defined space. So how are we going to do that? Uh, I am going to create a maximum zero float and a minimum zero float. And what this is going to allow me to do is going to allow me to take my rounded value from pitch and yaw and then work out what the maximum in a space is and the minimum in a space is. So some sort of a calibration, if you will. So I plug in yaw to both of these. Pitch, excuse me. That goes into a value there. And that value goes back into the minimum or the maximum. So what we're doing is we're sending it a value we're checking it against zero, and if that value is greater than zero, then this will output here. So if I put my arm up, you'll see it's increasing, but if I bring it down and then go up again, until I go higher, it won't go more, because we're passing the maximum value back into maximum and comparing it against itself. We're going to do the exact same for minimum, and hopefully this makes sense. So now, to calibrate your user, you would say, okay, put your hand as high as you can, and as low as you can and then you have a baseline for both the maximum and minimum that the pitch will output in that space and we can use these to map them into our screen our screen is just going to be a jit.lcd uh, it's not going to be overly fancy so i'm just going to copy all of this work here i'm going to paste it and let's bring it down here, bring my LCD up, turn it on so it's white. And we are going to just control the uh, a rectangle prepend rect pack into one, two, three, four. I'm just going to do a really simple uh, setup here. So I'm going to plus 40, plus 40. To that, oh, that's the wrong place. That goes into LCD. So now I should. Oh, no, something's gone wrong. Oh, it helps if I put in the right command. It is frame rectangle. So now I should be drawing a 40 pixel square box. Uh, the these are essentially the the top left hand coordinates. Simple. I'm also going to add a connection from these this prepend into clear, just so every time it moves that it refreshes the LCD for as well. So hopefully you can see where this is going. We are going to use these values to map our up and down movement onto this, which is the x value. So to do that, we're going to scale. I'm going to set 0 and 1, and then 0 and 320, because that's how big my LCD is. My maximum is going to go into the... Mm, I don't want that value, I want this value. My maximum is going to go into the minimum, and my minimum is going to go into the maximum because pitch works inverted off. 
So uh, up is positive, down is negative, and we need scale to work accordingly. 0 and 320 are going to stay the same. And then the number we're going to scale is the uh, initial value. So now, if I plug this into here, oh, that's the wrong one. If I plug this into here, and then change that to 240. Now, when I move my arm up and down in the space, because I've set my maximum to be as low as my arm is here, uh, it won't go any further. So up and down and up and down. And obviously if the user moves their hand higher than it was previously in their calibration, the scale will update accordingly. Simple as that, we're gonna duplicate it all. Change this number to 320. Plug that in there, that in there, and that in there. And then I'm gonna send this over here. So now when I move my arm, it's mapped as if it were a mouse. And obviously this is very basic, but you can see the, the use for it already. We could make a game in Max here where uh, physics, the the uh, jet.gl world has really just taken off in Max 7.2. So you can look at sort of actually manipulating objects in that. When I create my fist, that's me picking something up, say, let it go. You can see that uh, my, my action is changing. Uh, so this was just a really quick overview of in inputting Mayo into Max and physically controlling stuff. I was really interested in this gesture. This is uh, actually part of my real job. Uh, interested in getting the, the gesture data out here so I could control it as if I was a pointing device. Uh, we could update the LCD to be a full 1080 4K screen just by passing these values, updating the scales top end, uh, and then full screening for example, or using it as an overlay on an actual device. So I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Quaternion? Quaternion.